morning, everybody. Welcome to Church Online and Community Family Church. We know that you are already feeling welcome and enjoy the morning service with us. There has been a few birthdays this week and we love to say happy birthday. That's your special day and we want to celebrate you. Rosalind Creer, Melissa La Puerta and Pia Juris. Mag jylle a prachtige geseende en a baie, baie besondere jaar he. Vol baie mooi onthou oomblik en ons hoop jylle is heerlijk bederf. Ons is vreselik lief jylle. Right, we have some special announcements this morning. The president opened up for 250 people indoors, so our services are starting. Um, as of today, we also have in-person services. At the moment, we will still continue like we did when we were open a few months ago with only two in-person services per month because infection rates are still quite high, so we want to space it out. For the month of September, though, we'll only have one service and that is today. Then is it's a long weekend, two school holidays, and then we'll, from then on, we'll have two in-person services per month. So today and then our next in-person service will be Sunday the 17th of October. And on that Sunday, we will also be celebrating International Grandparents Day, which was actually last Sunday, but obviously we were still only... Um, church online last Sunday, so we have moved it to 17 October. So bring your um, mothers and fathers, everybody who's a grandparent, even if your kids don't live in South Africa, bring them to our in-person service. We'll also celebrate you with church online. We are extremely excited to, to minister the word to you on the 17th, but to also to celebrate all our beautiful grandparents. We love you so much and we have something special in store for you. We are also planning a wonderful worship morning for you and our preliminary date is the 7th of November but we'll get, get back to you and just um, confirm the date. We know that we've all been missing our CFC worship moments together and therefore on the 7th of November we'll have a morning of worship for you. We can't wait to celebrate that day with you. So with opening uh, in-person services, we are also opening in-person for ladies, men, joy, youth. Everything will be in-person as well from now on. Our life groups, some of them are in-person, some of them are online only, some are in-person and online. So fall in wherever you would like to fall in, give us a ring, contact us on the email address at the bottom of the screen. We'd love to slot you in some way. Have a beautifully blessed Sunday. Chris is bringing your word for today. Good morning everybody, Community Family Church, all our friends watching with us on media. It's so good to also uh, welcome you to our online service. We also have an in-person service this morning. It's just good to bring the Word of God to you. So many people have said over the months, and especially in the time we're in right now, that they feel it's too hard. We literally hear so many people saying on a daily basis, I can't go on. And therefore, I believe the Lord laid on my heart this word to you this morning for the time that we are in. And I want to entitle my service by saying, you are empowered by God. God is our strength. God is our source. When we feel we can't, then we really can. Because within us, and that is what we will look at today, is everything that we need for life. It was not a surprise to God what happened in the world and that He will provide for His children on a daily basis. God is still God. He is in control. So today we're going to look at the power that comes from God. Uh, we're also going to look at the anointing that God gave us. We're also going to look at the strength that comes from God. So you will find out that you are able and that you can go on and that God has already placed within you the ability to do life. And so we just need to line up our minds and really receive the word and live by the word, stand up and go for it because we have a victorious, wonderful future ahead of us. Now, we are empowered by God also means that we are anointed for everyday life. The word empower means 
that you have received strength to be able to do what you need to do. Um, it also means, empowerment means to make one strong, to be more confident, to give abilities so that you can live your life. So these are the key words, and we're going to look at them this morning. Think about your life, where you at, family, finances, your career, whatever it might be, within you, you have already received from God the anointing, the empowerment, the strength, being made stronger, given more confidence, boldness, and abilities, talents, gifts that is within you to do life. And that is what we're going to look at today. And God has anointed us to do this. The word anointing means God's ability on our life. Something we have received, so it is, we have it in us already. It is there. You don't have to try and look for it. Look to the inside, take it out and live because God has already placed that within you. So he has given us these things. We've received it from God so that we can fulfill our lives. He talks about inner substance. You have substance within you in order to do life. Uh, when life is hard, when there's a lot of worries, concerns about things, you have the power, you have the anointing, you have the substance to do it. And for this reason, Paul wrote in Philippians 4 verse 13, the following. He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So the empowerment, the anointing, the substance, the strength, we have received that already. He said, past tense, I can do all things through Christ who has strengthened me. So we have it in us already. Therefore, you are able to do it. So I want to encourage you this morning. And uh, I want you to know that you are empowered by God. And together with Paul, we need to say the same. I can do all things. Notice the verse starts with that he said he can do all things. Why? Because he's been strengthened by God in the inner man. And with that mindset, we need to embrace life and do it. In 1 John 2 verse 20, the Bible says the following. You have an anointing from the Holy One. Already received it. It's already in us. He says to do what? This same anointing. It is God's ability on the inside. It's already there. Teaches us concerning all things. Ek hou daarvan. Jy hoef nie ver te soek. Jy moet na jouself, binnen jou kyk, en besef, jy kla alles wat jy nodig het, nie net vir vandag nie, maar vir die rest van jou leven op aarde. Dis hoe die Heere, hoe die skatte in ons bere, in ons inbou as mens, as sy kind, so dat ons die leven kan leef en geniet. Nie net as daar uitdagings is, sal die Heere ons verlaat nie, maar hy bekrachtig ons, hy salf ons, hy gee ons die vermoe, die talente, die denke, die weisheid, hoe om dier te gaan, aan te gaan, want hy kan alles doen dier Christus, wat my die kracht gee. So dis wat die woord vir ons leer, en dis so belangrik om dit te glo in jouself. So what did we learn so far? That you already have what you need on the inside of you. All of those wonderful gifts, treasures from heaven, from the hand of God is within us already. We can do it. Together with Paul, we need to say, I can do all things because my strength, my ability, my anointing, my power, my strength comes from God. My confidence is from Him. Ek luister nou die dag na a story wat op die TV was. Dit is van twee vriendinne van een dorp in die Karoe. Nou hierdie dorpie, sy naam is Merweville. Ek het op Google Maps gaan kyk waar is Merweville, want ek het nog nie daarvan gehoor nie. As jy op die N1 rui dier die Karoe met Kaapstad achter jou, en jy gaan voorbij Leinsburg, voor jy by Leogamka kom, draai jy links, daar op een grondpad, tussen die koppe in die Karoe, en ongeveer 150 kilometer van die hoofroutes af, lee een klein dorpie, een klein stofkoliekie, 
Daar is zeker omtrent op die meeste 40 huise wat die dorp uitmaak, met een winkeltje en een kerk. En dis dit, ver van alles, die vrouw sê, hulle het net water vanuit een boorgat. In die ochende 6 uur gaan die elektrische tijd die boorgat kracht aan, dan pompen hulle water in die dorpse se, um, ontvangsarea in, en dan het hulle net water tot omtrent 9 uur, dan is die water klaar. Tot die volgende dag, wanneer die proces om weer herhaal. Dis hoe hulle lewe, daar is nie eens water voor elke oomlik van elke dag nie. Maar die twee vriendinne het gesê, Jere, jy kan ons help. Daar is hongersnoot, die boere krijg zwaar, die gemeenschap trek zwaar, wat kan ons doen om een seen te wees vir ons dorp, merwe wil. Hulle het toe begin en begin experimenteer, hulle hou daarvan om lekkers te maak. Ja, so het hulle Karoe Blessings begin. Dit is een plek wat Italiaanse nuga lekkers maak. Vandaag verkoop hulle hulle lekkers oor die hele Zuid-Afrika, selfs kliënte in ander lande. Hulle lekkers is so heerlik, dat hulle kan nie voorblij met die maag daarvan nie. Uit een klein dorpie, met die naam van Merwebel, het die Heere reeds in hulle gesit, wat hulle nodig het, om sienen te wees vir die om hulle. So het hulle dan begin inkomste verdien, en 30% van hulle winste gaan om die gemeenskap te help, waar daar honger en tekort is. Kyk die sien van die Heere, maar hulle het onderhoud met die twee vriendinne, en al twee sê die selfde, jy moet geloe, dat jy kan opstaan, en iets kan doen. As jy nie in jouself geloo, die reëerse vermoe wat reeds in jou is nie, gaan jy nie iets kan doen nie. En dis die sleetel van vandagse boodskap. Ons moet geloo en weet, dat ons bekrachtig is, versterk is, gesalf is die reëere, om vandag te lewe, en een seen te wees vir hom, en die mense om ons. If we also look at the Bible, did you know that, Between the old, the last book in the Old Testament, and the New Testament, the start of the first book, Matthew in the New Testament, a period of 400 years gone by. For 400 years, there was absolutely no word from God. There was no prophet, there was no preachers, there was nothing. It was a time of 400 years of total silence from heaven. How difficult it must have been for those who lived in those days. Absolutely no word for 400 years. Silence from heaven itself. Then suddenly the angels came and announced the birth of Christ. And we know that Christ was born and the New Testament started. Suddenly there was a change. But I want to show you something powerful in it. Because Jesus was ministering in the synagogue the one day. And he took out the scrolls, the Bible of the Old Testament in his days. And he was referred to Isaiah. And he read the following. But then he said something that made the difference. That started the blessing of the kingdom of God to his generation. And for all generations to come for all eternity. Let's turn to Luke chapter 4. And we're going to read from verse 16 to verse 21. And we read the following. So Jesus came to Nazareth where he has been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. He was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and he sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. This is a remarkable passage. The beginning, the start of a remarkable ministry of our Lord. And we see his impact in all the books of the Bible. 
and all the wonderful things he did. But this is where it started. He first of all read and realized that the spirit, the empowerment, the ability of God is upon him. This was written many, many years before he came. Then he realized God has anointed him to do what? Anointed, empowered him to preach the gospel, to heal broken hearts, to set people that are in captivity free, to recovery of sight to the blind, to set people free that are oppressed. And listen to this, to announce the acceptable year of the Lord. I want to announce the same to you today. And then Jesus said, the last verse, today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So the Lord understand that it was, although there was 400 years of no word from God, suddenly he realized God the Father within him has anointed, given him the ability to do what he needs to do, to be able to change and to produce and to be a blessing. And God is saying to us the same in the midst of the 18 months of the pandemic that we've been in. I want to say to you, God has a great restoration plan in store for you. But you have to believe that you are able, that you are anointed. You have to believe that the Spirit of God is in you so that you can produce what you need to do where you at, in your family, in your workplace, in your life, because God wants you to grow and, and really prosper and really enjoy life and receive abundance in all areas. In 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, Paul wrote the following. He said this, We have this treasure in earthen vessels. In other words, within us. So he's talking about something that was given to us. Remember what he said in our opening scripture? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And here he says, We have already, past tense, this treasure within us. Why? So that the greatness of the power will be of God and that not of ourselves. In other words, we already have what we need for life itself. Everything that we will ever need, whether we go through hard times or good times, times of abundance or times of lack, we already have within us all that we will need concerning life. So look to the inside. Do what was given unto you. Uh, enjoy what you do every day. Do what comes naturally. Do what is in your heart. Follow your dream because it's given by God and you will see the results and the blessing in spite of the difficult era that we're in that God will produce in you but also through you in this time that we are in. From scripture, and there's many scripture that confirms that that God has planned us. God has set us on the earth at the exact time, at the exact place where we live, uh, where we work, even the time slot that we are in, in spite of the pandemic worldwide, we know that we are planned by God. And because He has planned us, He has also empowered us to do life. He has given us all the tools, everything we need to succeed in what we do. So God has planned us and we all have a purpose. We all have received gifts and talents to do something with it. And God wants to use you. It will start in your family, in your career, in your community. Uh, be a blessing to those around you and truly bring glory to him. Bring his kingdom to those around us. Upon our abilities, our gifts and our talents, we have also received God's ability. That is the anointing. It is painted upon our ability to do life. It is His power, His anointing that will help us to do life. But you have to believe and say, I will stand up. I'm going to do it. Lord, show me. I want to do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You see, in the New Testament, where we live right now, not in the old, not even the 400 years of silence between the old or the new. Not even when Jesus walked the earth. We are here today, 2,000 years after the crucifixion. And listen, it is Christ in us that is the anointed one to help us in life. 
In John 10 verse 10 from the Amplified Bible, Jesus made this declaration. He said, the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill and destroy. If we look at the virus, we really see this stealing from jobs, income, stealing, killing, destroying. We see, we've truly seen these things. And look at this. Jesus said, I came that you may have and enjoy life. So there's the promise. We believe it. We receive it. We believe that we have life. That it's a gift from God, but also to enjoy life. Ah, oh, ek is a groot voorstander daarvoor, om rechtig elke dag te geniet. So Jesus said, I want you to have life. It's a gift. But I also want you to enjoy life. And he said, and that you may have it in abundance. The meaning of the word abundance is this, to the full, till it overflows. I declare to you today that from this day onwards, we receive the abundance, the full, till it overflows life of God in us and through us. So we believe it and we receive it and we thank God for this wonderful promise. And we have to stand up and do something with the gifts, the abilities, the talents, the anointing, the empowerment that God has given unto us. If you're going to sit and lay the whole time, nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to change. Stand up and do something. Remember the story of the two friends from Merville. They started making sweets, uh, nougat sweets, and today they are a great blessing to their town. So God wants to do the same with us, in us, and through us even in the midst of the time that we are in, so that we will shine bright and be a bargain of light and be a lighthouse to those that come from a stormy sea. So what leer ons vanochtend? Dat alles wat ons nodig het vir die lewe en die toekomst, ons rest van ons lewe nog, selfs op aarde, is reeds in ons. Die Heer het in ons gesit, ons kan dit doen. En dit is vir elke area van ons levens. Dit is vir ons fysische gezondheid, dit is vir ons um, inkomste, ons werkplek, dit, vir, dit is vir ons emotionele toestand, elke area, geest, siel en lichaam. So kom ons kyk na binnen en da, daar waar die geest van die Heere woon en weet dat van daar kan ons trek en uitleef uh, dit wat nodig is vir elke dag lewe. Hy gee ons genade, hy gee ons sy kracht en ons kan dit doen. In 2 Korintiërs 4 van vers 16 tot 17 schrijft Paulus die volgende. Hij zei: daarom gee ons niet moed op nie, maar al vergaan die uiterlijke mens, nogtans word die innerlijke mens dag na dag vernieuwe. So alles wat ons nodig het, elke dag, kom van binnen af, die innerlijke mens. In die woord sê, dag na dag gee die Heere nieuwe kracht, nieuwe genade, een nieuwe versterken, een nieuwe vrijmoedigheid, een nieuwe salven, dag na dag, want het kom hier van binnen af. Die woord sê in spreke van die hart van die mens, spring die lewe, from the heart of man flows the issues of life. En dit is so waar, en dit is waar we vandag so woord gaan. Vers 17 sê, hy sê ons lichte verdrukking, wat vir een oomlik is, bewerk vir ons een alle oortreffende eeuwige gewig van heerlijkheid wat voorle. So hy sê, wat ons ook al gaan, dit is een lichte verdrukking. Hy sê, dit is vir een oomlik, maar daar is een eeuwige oorweldige gewig van heerlijkheid wat daar vir ons bag. Hoe ontvang ons dit? Ons staan op, ons geloof dat ons kan, ons gaan aan en sê, Heere, die gaves, die kracht, die, die um, vermoe wat u my gegeet, ek gaan daarmee woeke, elke dag daarmee my bezig hou en so sal dit oopvou in dit wat die Heere vir jou het. En so kyk jy terug een dag en sien, ten spuite van moeilike zwaar tye, die sien wat die Heere dier jou leven bewerkstel. Maar dit werk hand aan hand met ons wat glo, wat sê ons kan. Want nou Jesus sê, hy wat glo, vir hom is alles moendlik. Paulus sê, ek kan alles doen dier Christus wat my die kracht gee. Kijk hoe belangrijk is hierdie hoop en hierdie 
vertrouwen en hierdie, hierdie besef, kom ons staan op en doen dit. In Psalms 27, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says this, I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So we have to believe in the Lord, believe that there's good things in store, believe in my heart, in my mind, that goodness and good things is ahead and a favorable outcome is about to realize in my life. Verse 14 says, therefore wait on the Lord, be of good courage. Listen to this. He will strengthen your life. Isn't that amazing? Wait, I say, on the Lord. No, that doesn't mean you just sit and do nothing. You, you tap from the power, the strength that is given by God on the inside, and you do life every day. Family, this morning we see from the Word of God that you can do it. You can live today. You can do what you need to do because of God's power, God's strength, God's anointing on the inside of us. You just need to let it out. Just do it. Stand up and go on with life. Go on in your career. Go on in your family and enjoy the journey and see what God will do. Do your part and you will see the miraculous of heaven be revealed in and through your life. God is able to do anything. With him all things are possible. And for us, under the New Testament today, after the resurrection of Christ Jesus, is this. The key is to abide in Christ. Christ is the source of everything that we will ever need. Never separate your family. Never separate your job or your finances or even your future plans from Him. He is the key of it all. That's why the Bible says in Acts, in Him we live and move and have our being. Our connection to the ability, the strength of God is found in and through Christ, the one who lives in us. It is from that place of staying connected to Him, to abide in Him, that you will live an anointed, powerful and strong life in all areas of life. We find this in the words of Christ Himself. Turn with me, please, to John chapter 15, and we will read from verse 4 to 8. Jesus made this invitation to his disciples, saying to us, Abide in me, and then I will abide in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch. They wither, they are thrown into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be granted to you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Dit is een opsomming van wat oor ek praat van ochtend. En kijk die Heer is een belofte van voorziening in een wonderlijke toekomst en werkelijk waar net ervaar sy goedheid en sy voorziening in elke area. Maar het kom wanneer ons leven nabij aan hom, wanneer ons verbind bly aan hom. Dit is die sleetel. So in Psalm 37 verse 23 to 26 we read the following. He says, The Lord knows the days of the upright, his children, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in difficult times. In days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So whether it's COVID or not, God said, we shall not stand ashamed in this time. We will be satisfied in famine, dark, difficult, hard times. Verse 23, for the step of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his own arm. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging bread. He is ever merciful, that's our God. He lends to all, and his descendants are blessed forever. Wow, I received this word. 
Not only will I be blessed, but my children will be blessed. The Bible says, why? Because I seek after God. I yearn after Him. And I allow His gifts, empowerment, abilities, and anointing to flow through my life to be a blessing to those around me. So we can do it. Let's stand up and live to the full and enjoy every day and really embrace this word this morning and be the blessing and live the purpose that God has set out for you to live. And then our last scripture for today is found in Isaiah 48 verse 17. The Bible says, Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer. What is He called? He redeemed our lives. He's our Redeemer. I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you by the way you should go. So it's so important to realize. Don't sit and say, what will I do? How will we get through this? Don't say, I cannot go on. You can. Yes, we feel discouraged sometimes and we feel literally depressed in many areas. But I want to say to you, rise up. God has a great future in store for you. He has a great plan and purpose for your life still on earth. So let's do it. God is your redeemer. He will teach you how to profit. He will lead you in the way that you should go. So we believe, and I believe with you as I end today, that times of great restoration is in store for you. I believe that God will make a way for you and bless you beyond your wildest imagination. God, remember, Scripture says God is able to do abundantly above all that we can even think or ask. So we tap into that this morning, and I believe with you for great breakthrough and miracles in your life. Don't you give up on Him. He will never give up on you. Hold on to Him. Never let go and live your life. Do it. You are empowered by God and just stand up and enjoy every day and do what you can and see how God will do things on your behalf in and through your life today. I hope you receive the word. We believe the word and we're going to practice and be doers of the word. Therefore, we will be blessed, the Bible says in James. So I want to pray for you this morning as you receive the word to really be strengthened and really turn to what is in you already and live your life to the full. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word this morning, your encouragement from your word and really just to set our minds on reset our minds again to line up our thoughts on what you see and how you see life and we receive it this morning i pray for every person hearing this word that they will be strengthened will be encouraged will really experience and really feel your anointing that will rise up your ability your empowerment your confidence your strength that will rise up within them and they will stand up and do what you've called them to do, what they do, what they are busy with, what you find their hands to do, that they will do it with all their might. Father, bless your people today is my prayer and thank you for miracles, provision, protection, breakthroughs. Thank you for peace and joy. Thank you, Lord, that we will truly enjoy everyday life, that we will truly have life, the gift that comes from Jesus, but also have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. So I pray for this restoration, that there will be a manifestation of the overflow of the fullness of God in our lives. We believe it, we receive it, and thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. Provide and protect and bless your children, I pray. Every family, every business, every person in all areas of our lives we receive. In Jesus' mighty name we ask. Amen. Amen. It means so be it. This day unto you. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, we want to give you an opportunity to do so right now. Please follow in the prayer that will come up on your screen right now. God bless you. Thank you for being with us again online. And remember, we will let you know about our in-person services. Please join us for a service. Have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy your week. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.
Dear Father God, Today I surrender my life to you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and for raising him back to life so that I can spend eternity with you. I am now your child. You are now my Father and your Holy Spirit now lives in me. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I love you. Amen.